Well, here now is Joseph Fisher, a prop master on movie sets who has experience handling weapons in the military and is a retired NYPD detective. Joseph, thank you for being with us today. A lot of questions for you, but I want to start with this one. If you look on paper, there are a lot of steps that a firearm has to go through before it ever ends up in an actor's hand. So it strikes me that for this to happen, there must have been a an enormous breakdown in protocol on that set. Is that how you read this as well? Good evening, thank you for having me. Uh, absolutely, there was a very, very serious breach here in the safety protocols that we follow in the motion picture industry. Anytime a weapon is introduced on set, it's the responsibility of the armor who's transporting that weapon to inspect it before it leaves that armor's facility. When the weapon gets on set, it's inspected again. The weapon goes through about three different checks before it will ever get near the actor's hands. So, so somewhere along this line, something seriously broke down. So, Joseph, when you look at that, I mean, three different checks. We, we've seen a couple different names, the assistant director, the armorer here. As you're trying to diagnose what happened, does this look like an issue where the assistant director was playing fast and loose with protocols, or would you say it's more likely that the armorer perhaps wasn't doing the job that she's there on set to do? Unfortunately, without being there and without knowing all the facts of the circumstance, it's hard to place blame, and it, it would be jumping the gun, no pun intended, to do so right now. Protocol-wise, Having the assistant director handling the weapon is a breach in our protocol. Mm -hmm. We typically go from armor to prop master to actor and right back in that chain of custody. Joseph, ultimately, you know, people want to figure out, okay, where does the problem start here? There's obviously a chain of events. We're going to learn more about the facts in the days ahead. But is this a situation where it's the highest level, the producer? Uh, who is not setting the right tone on set for the handling of these weapons. And that's why ultimately a corner gets cut, the assistant director gets involved where he shouldn't be involved, and you can end up with a situation like this. This set seemed to be plagued by a lot of issues when it came to the crew. I understand that there was a walkout earlier in that day that involved a lot of key cast members and crew members. Who left, who still stayed, we're still trying to figure out, as far as I know. But there was definitely a serious, erroneous breach in the protocol with the handling of the gun. It should have never went to the assistant director. If any part of this process, the assistant director should have been responsible for ensuring the safety on set, ensuring that the protocols were followed by the prop master, by the armor, and by the actors handling the weapon. And the introduction of a possible live round on set is a serious breach in our protocol. You never have a live round anywhere near a set or near prop weapons. J Joseph, I mean, just to that live round issue, because this is, this is the perplexing thing. Why in the world was that there? And is there any circumstance in a, a situation like this, a, 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 a production like this, where you would have a live round, where it would make sense for that to be there? And if that's the case, what are the safety protocols typically around that? The only time you'll see live rounds actually being used in any kind of media would be a show like Mythbusters, where they're doing a scientific experiment showing what the bullet capable of doing. And that's always in a controlled environment like a firing range under strict supervision with a lot of serious safety protocols in place for the talent and for the camera crew. For a film it just doesn't make sense to have it there. This, this strikes me, Detective Fisher, we appreciate your thoughts. This strikes me as a situation where you have many different lines of failure, and you got to wonder, does that start with the tone at the top in this particular production? But that's a question we'll learn as the facts come out. Detective Fisher, thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.